that's what I would do if I could go back in time. Hello, welcome to the Wild Gut Project. My name is Carrie. This channel is all about being vegan and low FODMAP for irritable bowel syndrome. And today I want to give you some tips for if you're just starting out on the low FODMAP diet. So probably my most popular video I've made on this channel is the 12 tips for if you're starting the low FODMAP diet. And there are actually quite a few things I didn't mention in that video, which I would like to put in this one now. So let's get going. Okay, so this one I have no idea why I didn't put it right at the beginning of the very first video I made with the tips. And that is to download the Monash FODMAP app. Here it is. And these are the guys that do the research for this diet, they're the ones that developed it and they're constantly updating this app with the latest research and all the portion sizes and it's quite expensive but as I said it updates so if you were to buy a book you can just automatically update it and that money obviously helps fund the research that is making this diet possible for us so fantastic, honestly you, you can't do it without it because it gives you all the small portions to be honest the only negative comments I ever get on this channel are people going, um, no, that's not low FODMAP. When it is, it's just the portion size and that person's just not been eating broccoli, for example, because they thought you can't have broccoli. Whereas actually in the app, it shows you that you can have, I think like half a cup of broccoli if it's just the heads. It's that kind of information that you really can't get elsewhere. So please, please, please download the app. The second piece of advice that I wish I said in the other one is to have quick meals that are just ready to go like 10 minutes you have a nice wholesome balanced nutritious meal that's low FODMAP and vegan um, and have those recipes kind of set out at the start so these are a few recipes I've done that are 10 minutes kind of depending how quickly you chop there's always gonna be times when you're really hungry in a hurry because you can't buy stuff on the go you, you can't pick up a sandwich that happens to be low FODMAP and vegan like it doesn't exist yet unfortunately so having these meals really is just it's just essential to be honest you can't you probably will break and give up if you don't have these meals in your repertoire. Thirdly, a big kind of mindset thing is to not expect to suddenly feel absolutely fine, perfect overnight. It's just quite a gradual process. All the formats you have been consuming kind of need to, I guess, work their way out. You need to adjust this new way of eating, the kind of the schedule changes a bit. So you just need to be patient with your body. For some people it can take eight weeks to get to a point where they start the re-challenges. Some people it could be two, but you know, you just kind of have to go in expecting it to be eight weeks and then be happily surprised if it's two or somewhere in between. Okay, the fourth tip is something I could only really say in the hindsight because before I was just always kind of sick so I couldn't tell the difference. Um, but stress has a really big impact on IBS and your symptoms. So I think if I was to do the elimination phase again, I would just use it as this kind of challenge and this set period of time where I was going to make a really big effort to look after my of mental health and really go hard on the yoga and the meditation and the sleeping well and avoiding very stressful things that aren't necessary. Just yeah, go on an anti-stress journey as much as a low FODMAP journey. Like, that's what I would have done. Tip number five. Even though you know you should be working with a dietitian, you can still feel like you're not getting all the nutrients you need. Like in the NHS here, you don't get that much guidance. Um, and then you're always really worried because your diet's so restrictive that you're not going to be getting everything you need to be healthy. So I absolutely loved the app and there's also kind of a desktop version of Chronometer and it's free and you can just put the food in you eat. And you don't have to do it all the time, just I like to do it for the odd day, that's kind of a typical one. And then you can just check that you're meeting all your nutritional targets, you're, you are getting enough vitamins, you are getting enough minerals, and it just helps put your mind at ease. And then if you aren't getting enough of certain things, you can actually catch it and be like, oh, okay, I think I need to eat more seeds to make up for that and yeah, helps you kind of self-correct in a very informed way. So it would probably be really useful information to have for your dietitian, so win-win. If you're starting now, good luck. Um, you might like my low format vegan meal maker guide, that's very good for throwing together recipes in a hurry and quickly referencing portion sizes. So those are the five tips I wish I had added on to that other video. If you have any tips that you've kind of thought up since you started the low format diet, what advice would you give to those people watching this who are starting? Please comment down below. Um, but yeah, I make a video every Sunday. If you're subscribed, I guess I will see you next week. And um, yeah, thank you for watching. Bye.